Hi, welcome to Getting Started with Elixir by Peck Publishing, Section 4, Functions. In this section, we'll be exploring functions in modules. You'll learn how to create your own functions, use pattern matching on them, and employ anonymous functions as a means of reusing algorithms. Let's move on to the first video, Functions in Modules. In this video, we'll start by revisiting the concept of functions and see how we can define and call them in Elixir. We'll then proceed to explore the concept of modules, which are containers for functions. So let's start first by revisiting the concept of a function, which you should already be familiar with when we've talked about them in functional programming, all the way back in section 1. In simple terms, a function is a computational entity that has an optional name, receives a number of arguments, and always outputs a return value. In most programming languages, functions provide a way for us to reuse computations or commonly use repeated code. We can easily combine functions to express more powerful computations when we need. This is what a function in Elixir looks like. This function, named say hello, takes no arguments and returns the atom hello. Looking a bit more closely at this structure, the function has a name that comes after the DEF keyword, say hello. The list of arguments is placed inside parentheses, this case in particular being an empty list, so the function takes no arguments. After that, the body of the function comes in between the do and end keywords. A function can have multiple expressions inside its body, but only the value of the last one being executed is returned. In this case, the function only returns the atom hello. When the function has no arguments, the argument list can be omitted in its entirety, yielding a cleaner definition. Calling a function is very straightforward. Just write its name and the list of values to substitute the function's arguments. When calling a function with no arguments, the argument list can be omitted as well. This is the same we did when defining it. When working with Elixir, you may often find function names with a forward slash and a number in front of them. This is the Elixir and Erlang notation for describing a function. The number in front of the forward slash is the number of arguments the function takes, its arity. Elixir allows multiple functions to exist with the same name but different number of arguments. It's good practice though not to have functions with the same name do different things depending on the number of arguments, so they should be related in some form. Sometimes, we have functions for which we want to have default arguments in place, in case the caller does not wish to pass them. For this case, let's assume it would be useful to have the function return hello you in case the argument name was not passed. Elixir allows us to have a default value for an argument using the double backslash in front of the argument's variable name, with the default value it should take. In this case, the function is assuming a default value of u for the argument name. We can then call this function with no arguments, yielding the expected behavior, or alternatively, passing the name we want as an argument. Let's move on to see how we can chain function calls in a complex way. We were given this set of functions. Person, which outputs a map with the person's first and last name. Full name, which converts a person to a string with its first and last names concatenated. And say hello, which takes a person's name and the from attribute and outputs a hello quote from the from attribute. Using these functions, we want Jeff to say hello to Joe Smith by chaining the function calls together. The trivial solution is simply replacing the arguments of the functions with function calls to other functions. In this case, we start back to front. We call the say hello function, passing as the first argument a call to the function full name, which receives as its first argument the result of calling the function person. Rewinding to say hello, we also pass the string Jeff as the second argument to this function. While this works for small chains, it can get pretty hectic for larger ones, especially with multiple arguments in the middle. We can alternatively write this using the elixir pipe operator, that thing with the bar and the greater than sign. With this, we can make the logical steps appear in a front-to-back order, starting with the person, getting his full name, and passing it to the say hello function with Jeff. The pipe operator works by injecting the value on the left as the first argument of the function on the right. With this, we don't need to explicitly pass the argument anymore, so we can just omit it. Full name no longer receives anything, and say hello only receives its second argument. The pipe operator allows us to chain multiple function calls in a very expressive manner, resulting in cleaner code. Just remember that you need to keep the parentheses when using the pipe operator, as omitting the parentheses on the functions may result in ambiguous behavior. 
Now, you may have been trying to execute the previous code on the interactive elixir prompt, only to find that it returns a lot of errors related to not being able to define functions outside a module. That's actually true. All functions, and code in elixir for that matter, must be defined inside the scope of a module. Modules are groups of related code expressed as functions. Think of a module like a box or container with some name, and in which we can place various functions. Here, we're depicting a module named basic math with two functions, add, which adds two numbers together, and square, which multiplies a number by itself. And this is what it looks like in code. We define a module in pretty much the same fashion as we would a function, but using the def module keyword instead. Inside the body of the module go our functions, add and square. Notice that the add function is showing the shorthand notation for its body. This can be used when the function's body is a one-liner. Calling functions belonging to a module is again similar to what we've seen earlier. The only difference is that we prepend the name of the module followed by a dot and then the function call. Most of the time, modules need to use functions defined in other modules. Here, we have a complex math module that uses the basic math square function in order to provide a result for its cube function. This requires that the square function be prefixed with the module name, as we've seen previously. We can change the name of the basic math module from the perspective of the complex math module by using the alias keyword. Here, we're changing the basic math to just math, which yields a shorter name. This is particularly useful to give a different semantic meaning to modules with unrelatable names. Elixir also allows modules to be imported to other modules. The import keyword injects all functions of the basic math module inside complex math. With this, we can use the square function as if being part of the complex math module, without the need to prefix its module name when calling it. This mechanism has a side effect though as all functions from the basic math module, including the add function, have been injected. This will result in errors if the module being imported has functions with the same name as the ones in the module importing it. By using a limiting keyword, such as only in front of the import statement, we can limit the functions being imported to just square. The only attribute takes a keyword list of function names and their arity. So in summary, for composing modules, we can use alias to reference a module by a different name, or import to include the functions of a module inside another. There are also times where we don't want certain functions to be exposed from our module. In this example, we have an hello function that calls say hello to calculate its output. We just want the calling party to use the hello function, not say hello. Elixir provides us a different keyword for defining private functions, defp. Private functions can only be used from within the module they were defined. Modules also allow the definition of constants. They are very useful for referring to literal or complex values that need to be used by different functions, and to which we want to give a name. Constants are defined by the at symbol before their name. In this example, we're defining a constant hello and assigning it the atom value hello. In our function below, we use the constant to output the atom. This value is bound at compile time, so it cannot be modified during the program's execution or by any other function. In this video, we've defined functions and learned how to call and chain them. We've also explored the concept of modules and how we can compose them in various ways using the constructs provided by Elixir.